Hello everyone, this is the podcast for Chapter 3 from We Drink From Our Own Wells. I hope that you are enjoying your time down in Mexico, and I hope you are able to follow the, the basketball tournament if you are into such a thing. Uh, personally, I'm thrilled because this is Friday the 25th, and tonight I get to watch my alma mater Marquette uh, play and hopefully beat North Carolina. So although my bracket has been completely busted, uh, at least I still have Marquette to root for, at least, uh, at least for tonight. This chapter begins to lay out the relationship between spirituality and theology. And theology, as Gutierrez indicates, always begins with the encounter with God. Through some experience, whether it be at a place, in a worship surface, through a person, through an object, or a painting, or sometimes just sitting still, whatever the case may be, people encounter the divine in such a way that its presence cannot be denied. God becomes undeniably real, and this makes a difference in one's life. Now, without such an encounter, spirituality or uh, religious studies is merely a study of the phenomenon of human religiosity. So it asks questions like, what function does religion serve? How does it provide meaning? Does it provide a system of morals, etc., etc.? Um, it asks questions like, how do people incorporate religious beliefs into their daily lives? So in Mexico, there are many shrines in the streets. Some of them ask for some of them ask for specific prayer requests. Others are there for people to take time out of the day and maybe do a quick devotion. And so people who are interested in religious studies rather than theology would be interested in how does that embody or how do how does a given group of people embody their religious beliefs in their everyday lives. Okay? But in neither in neither case is the question of the reality of God relevant. They're looking at the phenomenon of religion and asking how does it work, how does it function, how does it provide meaning, etc. But theology always starts with the encounter with God. And the encounter with God begins the spiritual life. So the spiritual life is a recognition that the encounter with God has made a difference in one's life. And once that difference is recognized, then people do something about it. So maybe a helpful parallel would be to think about friendships. When you make a new friend, first of all, you meet them. You exchange pleasantries. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet, nice to meet you. And something about that, somewhere in that initial counter, your interest is piqued. So you decide to spend more time with that person. And as you begin to learn more about that person, uh, if, you, if you enjoy their company, then you start to take that person into consideration as you make decisions. So as an example, think of, groups, think of when groups of friends get together to decide what to do on a, on a given night. And you say, what do you do? I don't know. What do you want to do? And, and eventually you come to a mutual agreement because you don't want to do something that leaves your friend behind or leaves your friend or uh, you know puts your friend in an uncomfortable situation or maybe makes your friend sad because she or he really doesn't want to do that. As a friendship grows you begin to realize that the presence of your friends is having an impact on the way that you behave. So perhaps some of you you know, perhaps as you're visiting markets uh, around Mexico, maybe you have a friend or a family member, you know, maybe you've bought something for them. Just out of the blue, you have this desire to spend a little bit of money and maybe buy them a shirt or a hat or a bag or something like that. Your life has been impacted, your decisions have been impacted uh, in, in a way that, uh, you know, that, that friends or, or family begin to make a difference. Likewise, sometimes we decide not to do stuff because of our friends or families or other loved ones. And so, you know, sometimes when I'm, when I'm considering a certain course of action, I think, well, what would my mother think if I did this? 
or even more uh, even more importantly for me right now what would my wife think okay because we don't want to let our friends down sometimes even if our friends are are not there at that moment okay then if we uh, if we move categories to to maybe some significant other parallels or a, or a, or a wife something like that then we have people who make or who have a larger effect on our lives and the only way to discover this is to spend time with them uh, or to use Gutierrez's language walk with them okay and so as you do you come to know them better and eventually you begin to share more and more of your life with them okay eventually you you uh, you might decide well so and so is my best friend or or I want to uh, spend more and more time with uh, with a certain person because I think I'm starting to love them okay? that as we walk with people we get to we get to know them better and we want to spend more and more time with them now from a Christian perspective according to Gutierrez once be one begins to walk with Jesus the better that person comes to know Jesus okay? and as with your friends you share common interests and desires because people tend to hang out with certain types of people oftentimes people who share interests in athletics will will hang out together so even though it may not be soccer season you might hang out with your teammates okay? sometimes people uh, form form social groups based on uh, social concerns or common political beliefs and so your friends take on certain character, uh, take on certain characteristics. You become you become surrounded by like-minded uh, people, and you end up doing things together because you enjoy certain things or value certain experiences. And the same goes for for Christians' relationships with Jesus. As they walk as they walk their spiritual paths, Christian persons find that they share common interests with Jesus. Okay. Now, especially for Gutierrez, this means that believers share a common interest in caring for the poor with Jesus. Believers become a voice for justice, or as Gutierrez puts it on page 45, a follower of Jesus is a witness to life. That at all moments when one is walking with Jesus, one affirms and tries to make life better rather than uh, putting people down, decreasing the vitality of people around them. Another way of thinking it is that people try to try to add energy to life rather than suck the energy out of the room. I think we all know some people that it's just difficult to be around because they are rather lifeless or they lack a certain uh, amount of energy. Other people the entire room brightens up when they walk in. They have a positive effect on our lives. Okay? So a follower of Jesus is much like that. Because of the walk with life, life is better around, uh, around those people. Now remember though, this shared walk does not begin with an intellectual decision. When you hang out with friends, you do so at first because you enjoy it something attracts you to them even though you probably don't have a firm rational or intellectual grasp of that of that reason but then only later do you ask the question what does this relationship mean what does it mean that i'm a friend with this person am i only friends what type of friend am i am i a facebook friend am i a close friend etc etc now often that meaning emerges on an emotional level that sometimes all of a sudden you just know that you're in love with someone okay and oftentimes when we're in love we do not need to think or talk or use words in any sense sometimes we simply sit with those with whom we love and we are deeply connected and so we do not always have to talk or analyze the relationship so relationships start on an emotional level in an interpersonal fashion and for Gutierrez the same goes for the religious relationship with God that at first people just spend time people spend time with God and only later then do they start asking questions about it this is where we start to get into the theological reflection because we ask questions about relationships 
on a human level we reflect, who was my best friend? Or maybe we think, you know, why do I always think about her? Sometimes we need to ask, is this relationship healthy? In these cases, we start reflecting upon the feelings that arose out of our original encounter with the other person. Similarly, if I'm in a relationship with, with her, what type of activities must I avoid in order to keep from hurting her? This does not always mean, uh, this does not always have to do with issues like fidelity or betrayal. So for instance, I could, I could never be in a serious relationship with someone who does not value the environment. I could never be in a serious relationship with someone who is a racist because we do not have the shared values that could build a relationship. But in order to, to realize what type of a relationship I'm in, I need to reflect upon those feelings. So theological reflection is similar. So after people make the ascent of faith, they ask, what does this relationship with God mean? And although the relationship with God always begins with an emotional experience, it cannot stay there. But as with other relationships, we never leave the emotional aspect behind. And thus, it is at once a, both a spiritual and a theological process. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for listening to this podcast. Uh, I will continue to get more up uh, in, in the coming weeks. Thank you to those of you who have submitted some more uh, rough drafts. I'm pleased that, I, uh, that the frequency is going up, but uh, I would like to see even more of them. If you have any questions about anything that's going on with regard to the class, please do not hesitate to email me. Um, I would be happy to, to uh, address your concerns. So I hope you're enjoying your time in Mexico, and I will talk to you later.